Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, a conspiracy of the highest order. This is why I love doing this stuff. Today is one of those days. So if you remember, a while back, there was talk about Nier Automata, which, by the way, is a fantastic game, and how the last secret in a game filled with secrets had been found. Discovered by Lance McDonald, who was modding the game at the time and reverse engineering code, and the resulting discovery was one that unlocked chapter select and some debug features. It was pretty interesting at the time. However, a new mystery is brewing on Reddit. User Sad Futago? Sad Futago? I'm not sure how you say that. On the Near Automata Reddit, started out by asking a very simple question. Hello, I'm new to Reddit. I was wondering how to open the church in Near Automata. People were like, can you explain what you mean? And the poster went on to say that it was in the copied city, a place where you simply can't enter any buildings, and went on to explain that they had gotten in, but their friend couldn't, so there was a problem. Obviously, people were like, this seems like a hoax, this probably isn't real, we're just being trolled. Then the poster freely asked if they could post an image of the location they found to show what they were seeing, and then did! Then people claimed, oh, this must be a mod of some sort. But Video Games Chronicle points out that the modding community for Nier isn't really that big or that advanced, so this seems unlikely. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Come with me as we go into crazy territory. The mysterious user then returns with another post today with video footage of the area. How to access it, what it looks like, and it definitely has some control vibes. And then at the end is the church. What's fascinating about this is inside appears to be a lot of things from, we'll say, other near media. There's a body with a flower on an altar, a shadowy pixel thing. There's some props and other things in the room that players who know near replicant or just the near verse will know and recognize. No spoilers, obviously. It also appears that it's all invincible, none of it is attackable. And of greater interest is the fact that there's a chest that can only be unlocked by one specific character. At first, people were like, what? And then they started trying to rationalize it with maybe it's the best mod ever made. But then you can clearly see a cutscene plays and it fits flawlessly into the world, so maybe it's real? It seems real, because the deep dive continues. In this image set from 2018, it shows a cut portion of the game featuring the church. The only problem is no one can replicate this. No one can get it to happen, but it's there. It was something that they designed to be put into this game. But the fact that no one can replicate it makes it seem like a hoax. However, I posit Yoko Taro is, in fact, a crazy person. And I'm convinced if anyone were to put one secret in one copy of one game, it would be that maniac. And while I'm not quite sure that's actually what's happening here, it would be amazing if it was. But I think more likely we're going to discover this is some big... ARG slash hype train thing for the new Near Switch version, the Near Automata Switch version that is coming out in October. I bet we're going to see something like that, but maybe, just maybe, there's one more secret in this game. And frankly, I'm totally here for it. And just so this isn't an episode of me gushing over a wacky conspiracy for a wacky game, let's talk PSVR 2. In a blog post over on the PlayStation site, we finally got more updates on PSVR 2. Another look at the headset, the controls, and more importantly, some built-in features. First up is the see-through view, which is very quickly becoming the standard for a good VR headset. The idea that you can see what's going on, through the headset and you don't have to lift it up and down once it's on. The PSVR 2 comes with front cameras that are used in games, but more importantly also for this feature. And honestly, anything to make finding the controllers easier is good by me. Also, if you're interested in broadcasting yourself, they're saying that with the PS5 HD camera, you can do so, although I'm sure there are a million other ways to do it, but they seem to be saying this is the best way. And then we get to something that I really care about, which is mapping out a customized play area. This is a big thing for me when it comes to VR. I need to be able to make sure my space is mapped out so I don't bump into literally everything because it happens all the time. 
So yeah, to say I'm excited for PSVR 2 is an understatement. My PSVR 1 has been used so much, it is falling apart. I still use it. <laughs> uh, I got my PlayStation 5 right here, let me tell you. Connecting this to the 5 is an atrocious mess of wires. It sucks. So I'm looking forward to the next generation, and hopefully it is as awesome as I imagine it will be. Speaking of things that are as awesome as I imagine they will be, youtube.com slash coxclips. Go there for all the VODs and all the shorts and all the different things that I do besides from this show and any of the more longer form things that I'm doing. You can find all sorts of stuff over there. I'd love it if you'd go and subscribe. That's it for the show. Thanks so much. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.